Adding a UPS or battery backup to your home network is always a good idea, especially if the outlet or circuit that is powering your network equipment is tied to other outlets in the house. I mean, you don't want your network going down if someone's running the vacuum or a hairdryer, right? So this causes a disruption in your service that you're gonna have to go fix, and it's really not great on your equipment. So today, I just wanted to talk about some things that you can do to protect yourself from this happening and even get alerted as to when it happens, all very affordably. Hey guys, it's Tim Trish from Ethernet Blueprint. Now, if you've followed me on my channel, one thing you've probably heard me say repeatedly is that I think it's a really great idea to have a battery backup or UPS protecting your home network. Now, not only is this gonna help protect your gear, but it's also gonna save you some headache of having to go power everything back on and check to make sure everything's running again if you were to have a short power blip. Now, if you watch this video here on the screen, I talk about when I downsized my network rack from a full-size network rack to the one you see here, I talked about the UPS that I bought for the project and that it was capable of alerting or monitoring if there ever was a power outage. But in that video, I hadn't bought any of the parts that needed to do it and I hadn't tested it. Well, I have bought everything and have been running it and testing it now for a month or so. And guys, I really like having this capability. The cost? $10 per year, so extremely affordable. Let's talk about it. Okay, before we get into the content, there's a couple things I need to disclose, simply because we typically have to do that on YouTube. Um, first and foremost, I'm not sponsored by CyberPower or any of the parts I'm talking about here. Um, I buy all the equipment I, I use in my videos. Uh, nobody sent me anything for free and told me to say nice things about it, okay? Secondly, I like to make sure I point out I am not a power expert, okay? There's a lot of inner workings that happen in UPSs that make one better than the other. Um, I'm not saying that CyberPower is better than any of the other UPSs out there. It's just a brand that I've liked to use in the past at a price point that I really like. It's just checked off all the boxes for me. I always recommend to my viewers, please make sure you do your research before you incorporate any kind of a battery backup system into your home. Okay, on to the video. All right, so this is the unit I'm currently using at my house. This is the CyberPower CP1500 PFC RM2U. It's a 2U unit, 1500 volt amps, and it's fully rack mountable. Now there's a lot of things I like about the unit. I like the price point. Um, I think it's a, a decent unit for the price. Um, I like the fact that it's rack mountable, but you can see they do have some versions that aren't, if that's something that interests you. Just keep in mind that not all these uh, options down here may allow you to do monitoring, so make sure you keep an eye on that. Um, I, I typically like the display. I like a nice big color display. You can click down through the buttons and, um, and you know look at different data about your about the power on your network. Um, if you only have a couple things to plug in, there's quite a few outlets on the back of it included, which I actually really like too. All of them are surge and battery protected, which is nice. Um, so all in all, a really, really nice unit. Now, the unit itself does not come with the expansion card. It just has the capability of adding one, which I'll show you here in just a second. But at um, $335, it's really not a bad way to go to protect your network. Remember, what this thing is doing is, is a couple things. It's gonna protect you from a, a random power outage, maybe like storms. And here in the Midwest, we get storms all the time. Matter of fact, we're in the middle of storm season where the power will just blip. Well, that's usually long enough. Even a blip is long enough to turn off your clocks in your house as well as your network equipment. So this is something like this is gonna protect you from that very, very easily. Um, and the other thing it's going to do is if your equipment does turn off all of a sudden and then all of a sudden regain power, this is going to help protect it from stuff like that because typically that's not good on your equipment. So, you know, for $335, I think it's a worthy price point to help protect you from the headache and from, you know, those types of power outages. Now, as I'll show you here uh, shortly, um, this, my unit with everything I have plugged into it, which is a lot, 
um, will actually run my network for around 30 minutes before the power depletes and everything shuts down. So, you know, it's not going to run it forever, but it is going to help you in those cases where the power's down for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. Um, and then I'll show you how all this kind of comes together. But the piece that's missing here is the expansion card. So let's talk about that next and, and kind of associate a cost with it. And then I'll show you the actual uh, Power Cloud panel. And then we'll talk about some sizing options here for your UPS in case you don't have as much network equipment as I do. All right, so the card that works in my unit, which by the way, I had to Google, it doesn't actually tell you this on the Amazon page that we were just on. I had to Google what card was compatible with my unit, and this is the one it came up with, the RC card um, 100. At 62 bucks, not a very expensive upgrade um, to add. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, the service that's tied to this card is only $10 a year. So for very affordable or reasonable costs, you know, we're talking about being able to not only protect your network from power issues, but also get alerting um, as to if something were to happen. Um, so this is the card I bought, 62 bucks. There is a wireless version as well. So uh, if that's something you are in need of, because maybe you're not putting your equipment in a rack, it's sitting on a shelf and you don't have additional switch ports or something, you could do the wireless version. I've never purchased this. I don't know how well it works. Uh, but I would imagine it works probably pretty well. The wired version was very, very simple um, to install. There's two screws that hold it into the UPS. I literally installed mine with the UPS running, so I didn't even power everything down, slid it in, and was able to get everything online, which I'll show you the software here in a, pre in a second. Um, pretty slick, pretty easy, super easy to set up. Um, but yeah, I think they've done a pretty good job. So this is the card you'd need for that. Um, to help protect your network and, and get you guys up and going with monitoring. It does come with a free, I think month, like I think it had 30 days of the cloud that you can use um, for to try it out and stuff, which I did. And just know there is a web portal version, so you can get to it from your browser on your internet, or on your computer, or there's an app, and I'll show you what both look like. Okay, so CyberPower calls their cloud um, solution Power Panel Cloud. And I will tell you, there's nothing really fancy in here, guys. What I'm using this for is really just the alerting aspect. Um, if you need, you know, extended capabilities, there are some in the different plans. But typically for a home user, you know, just kind of wanting to know when stuff goes up or down. Maybe see a little bit of history. Um, this... $10 a year plan is going to, you know, cover, check off a lot of boxes. So this is the dashboard. I only have my unit in here. You can see it's right here. However, if I did have multiple units, the $10 a year plan does allow me to monitor up to three nodes. Each unit is a node. So I could add one and, you know, maybe at my parents' house and actually um, add it to my plan, which is really kind of nice. Um, to do that, it's very simple. You can actually hit the add button over here and we're going to just basically add device by remote cloud card. It's going to kind of show you, hey, this is the one we're talking about. You hit continue and then you're just going to enter the information at once. Now, if you do this with the app itself, then you can actually um, just scan the little QR code on it with your phone to add it and it makes it go a little bit faster. Um, just so you know, and that's how I added mine at my house, but you don't have to do it that way. Now you're gonna get access to some information. There's an event log here, which again, doesn't go back very far. You can see some testing that I've done here uh, fairly recently. Um, you're gonna get a status log of your voltage, which it takes a second. You can look at that, you know, go back as far as your plan will allow you to go back. By default, it's only showing one hour here and it is pulling that information from the card. So some of these dashboards you go into do take a second to load. Um, there's some alert settings in here. So uh, right now I only have the app alerting me. Um, I don't use an email, but I could come in here and add a name and an email address, what kind of um, alerts I want to receive. And then I can base it off of which device, you know, so I can do different alerts for different devices. Um, that's kind of cool. Maybe you're doing this for a customer or something. So this is where you would set that up at. But as you can see, I just use the app. The, the, the email doesn't you know, apply in my house. I don't really need it. 
Um, there's a little bit under here under the device settings. Not really much in here. You can play around with this a little bit. You can see some of the features are locked uh, based off of my plan. And then there's some plan settings in here and your purchase history. Now, real quick, I do want to show you the different plans. So if we go over here to purchase plan and say we understand, these are the different ones that are available to you and what's allowed or what you get with these plans. Um, typically, you're getting some more logs. You're getting retention of data, um, things of that nature. You're able to add more nodes um, than just the three that come with. But for what I would say, typical home users, unless you're trying to troubleshoot something, you need to go back further in time. Um, I'd say this plan works pretty well. And at 10 bucks a year, not too shabby. Um, so kind of cool. If we go into my unit here, if we actually click on it, it's going to give us some very basic uh, data here. So it's going to tell you your battery health. And, and a little bit later in this video, I one of the things that you need to kind of keep in mind when you own a UPS or have a UPS is this has a battery in it. You're going to need to replace the battery at some point. So having an app like this can help you understand when the battery needs replaced. Typically, they I see them last around three to five years, depending on how often the battery is being engaged, the quality of battery, things of that nature. So you're going to get a little bit of time out of it. But at some point, I will need to replace the battery in this unit. And it's nice to be able to have the app or the web browser tell you when that app needs to be replaced. So not much you can do in here. Uh, there's just some general information. You can name your unit. So if you have multiple, you know which is which. As you can see, the recommended battery replacement date is 2027. So they're recommending every three years. I think you can typically get a little bit more time out of that. Um, you know, they're also in the business to sell you batteries. So kind of keep that in mind. But it's going to give you some general information about, you know, your setup. As you can see over here, my estimated runtime currently right now is at 40 minutes. That's cool. Sometimes it says 37. Sometimes I've even say it, seen it say as low as 28. And that's based off the criteria at that moment in time when it talks to the network about how much draw is being pulled um, by my setup. So, you know, right now, typically I would say I can run it for about 30 minutes um, with no power in my house. If, I, if the power is out for longer than 30 minutes, at least I have the opportunity to go downstairs and power everything off nice and gracefully um, and then power it back on gracefully um, once the power is restored to my house if it looks like it's going to be off for a while. So if nothing else, this is buying me some time. But a really nice little dashboard as well. Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you this, how quick it is, how quick you get the response and the alerts um, with the app that like how I, how I have mine set up. So let's actually just go ahead and do a test event and I'll show you kind of what this looks like. So I'm unplugging the power to my UPS right now. All right, it is now unplugged. Uh, my unit sh will beep at me, which I don't know if you'll be able to hear, but it just started beeping and there, about, what was that about? Maybe six seconds later, I get an alert saying that the power has failed on my UPS. You know, that's letting me know I need to do something. Something is going on at my house and I need to take care of it. So um, as you can see, the alerting's pretty quick. Um, not quite real time, but you know, I think reasonable um, for a system like this. I'll go ahead and plug the unit back in, which is done. And you can see almost about two seconds later, we get the alert that it's back up and running. The UPS is working normally and we're good to go. Now the battery does say, I've been doing tests here multiple. So the, t the battery does say it's at 46%. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it get charged back up. But all in all, the UPS is performing just as it should. Now, one little piece of advice I have for you guys, if you're shopping for a UPS system, I don't care what version or model or anything, it doesn't even have to be cyber power. Um, this is just an example of something that's worked well for me. My advice is make sure you look up all the parts and pieces you're gonna need before you buy. Now, I kind of got lucky. I bought my UPS first and then went back and bought my card later and the card ended up only being $62, like I said. However, if I had this model right here, which is the 500 VA version, but it is the OR uh, model of unit. The card that works with this one is a different model number and it's $300. So what I save in UPS costs, I more than make up in the cost of the card and the monitoring, which is just something that wouldn't have made sense to me. I probably wouldn't have bought it. So like I said, I kind of got lucky with my setup, 
just make sure you're doing your research and you and you man and you find out how much all the pieces are going to cost and the service is going to cost before you maybe pull the trigger. That could be part of your research. My second piece of advice for you is to properly size your UPS based off of your needs and requirements. Now here in Nebraska, my needs were very, very simple. There's two factors that played into this. One, we have storms here. When a storm happens, a lot of times, it'll just make the power flicker and blip and my lights will turn on and off and my clocks will all need to be reset. Uh, but that also means that my network equipment would shut down. I really was just trying to protect myself from those sort of outages. Any longer outages like that, I would probably just go down and power everything down anyway. Um, or, you know, maybe be worried more about the stuff in my freezer versus my network at that point. But that doesn't really happen very, uh, very often here. Secondly, my outlet that powers my network rack is shared. So I personally run the risk of something tripping that outlet and taking down my network. So by having alerting in place, I know to go look at that right away. I can either reset the GFI or I can go check the breaker, make sure it didn't trip. Meanwhile, my network stays up and running. Now, if I was to redo building my house, I would follow my own advice and get dedicated power to my network rack. However, the circumstances just weren't there when I was building my house. And so I didn't even know to ask for it. But that is a recommendation that I have for anybody building a house today is get dedicated power um, to your network rack so you don't run the risk of something else tripping your network. Um, but I didn't do that. So that was another reason that monitoring this, this um, device was important to me. It, it told me that I needed to go down and check my breaker or maybe reset the GFI or something to that point. So that's what I needed. So guys, kind of ask yourself, what are your needs? What are you hoping to get out of this thing? How long do you want it to run? What type of equipment is gonna be plugged into it? And then do the math, it's very simple math, to make sure you get the right unit, the right size for your setup. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me in this video. Thank you for tuning in. If there's any questions about anything I talked about, please leave them in the comments below. Also, if there's some power experts that wanna share some of their wisdom in the comments, we'll take that as well. Everybody's just trying to learn here. Um, but I will tell you that everything I have set up here has served me very well at a very affordable price. And as you can see, it's capable of a lot of things. So I hope this helps you with you guys' setup. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys in a future video.